Hello, and welcome to Our Devotions, where together we're developing lives with God at the center. I'm Daniel. This is my amazing wife, Amanda. Today we're going to be talking about identity, using the book of 1 Corinthians as a launching point. So grab your Bible and get ready to join us. So just the other day, I was listening to Pastor Jake as he was preaching, and he said something that I just I really loved. And one of the things that's important when listening to a message is to, to take note, to apply these things. And so I was just kind of going over this thought, and I wanted to, to look at a couple different verses and to dive into it a little deeper. Um, Pastor Jake had said this. He says, we, when the devil comes up, he likes to bring up our past. And he said, when he does... We may have done what he said we did, but we aren't who he says we are. Right. Yeah. And I, I just got thinking because in in Revelation chapter 12, talks about the devil and it calls him the accuser of our brothers. And it, it, it's this thing where it's so easy to find ourselves condemned, to find ourselves wrapped up in the mistakes and failures that we've made. And it's easy to think it's our own history that plagues us. Yeah. And not to recognize that we have an enemy who tries to use our history to rob our future. Yeah, the devil's like a big bully. He tries to convince you to do the wrong thing. And once you've done the wrong thing, he then tries to hold it against you for the rest of your life. <laughs> and it's, yeah, and it's such a tragedy. But if we can recognize the amazing wonder of the work that Jesus did, it yeah. changes everything. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, I said we'd, we'd make it there. It, it says... Uh, do not be deceived. And it lists all these different sins. And it goes, neither the sexually immoral, idolaters, adulterers, men who practice homosexuality, thieves, nor greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And it, you know, it gets this list and there's other spots where we've got long lists of, of sins. But verse 11 is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. It says, and such were some of you. Yeah. That's a past tense verb. What verb? It's not such are some of you, but were. And that means that what they once were doesn't need to be what they always are. Right. And sometimes we look and we go, well, I have failed. I have lied. I have stolen. I have cheated. I have. And you can fill in the blank with any sin that, that you've ever committed. And it's easy to go, well, I have, therefore I am. But he goes, such were some of you, but you were washed you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. And that means that what I once was doesn't need to be who I am. Right. That I get a new identity. That I get to become in Christ and my past is gone. In Colossians, it says that he nailed the handwriting of the requirements of the law that was against us to the cross, having canceled it. And it's this amazing thing going, yes, that was the accusation against me. That was the things that I have failed. That is where I messed up. But that's not who I am. Right. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. And that's not a license to live that way. Right. You know, this isn't a like, hey, there's grace so I can just do whatever I want. Like, <laughs> No. I mean, the Bible specifically talks about that and says that if we choose to go on sinning, we make sin our master. Yeah. Romans chapter 6, I think it's verse 16. And it's it's a powerful when we recognize that God's grace is an opportunity for freedom, not a license for sin. Right. Well, we can allow sometimes past sin to hold us back from doing what God has for us. I've heard so many people say, oh, I would love to go talk to this person, this friend I have about God, but they know what I've done. But I am too fill in the blank with whatever sin they've dealt with. So they feel unworthy. But we have to remember that we renew our mind with the word of God. So what we yeah. can do is we can come back to this. You know, if that's something you've struggled with, I encourage you to write out this verse. It's 1 Corinthians six eleven to remind yourself and to remind the enemy. So anytime those thoughts come to your mind where you think to yourself, I am not worthy. I can't do this because of something in my past. You yeah. recite that verse until you have it memorized and to where it's no longer head knowledge, but heart knowledge. And it remembers, it reminds you to rise up in those moments and to tell the enemy to be quiet, to silence his lies and to speak forth God's truth so that it becomes just a part of yeah. who you are. So it cannot stop you from doing and becoming all that God has for you. 
So good. It says it in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. I don't know what things may be behind you, but you are a new creation. And there is somebody who's joining us who's going, yeah, but you don't understand my failure, my sin was after I knew Jesus. And God did not give up on you. He did not go, oh no, what am I gonna do? I can't believe that they still failed. I'm gonna have to throw them away. Like that, that, That's not what it says. It says in 1 John 1, 9, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. And again, that's not a license to live in sin, but that's an opportunity to walk in freedom. And I wanna encourage you that no matter what may be behind you, that if you haven't taken it to God, you take it to God, that he wants to bring forgiveness, that he wants to set you free and to make you new. And I've talked to so many people who look and go, yeah, but you don't know what's behind me. And, and fill in the blank with whatever it is that they wanna make an unpardonable sin. And he goes, no, no, no. God wants to forgive you and make yes. you new. And when he makes you new, when you've been washed in his blood, it doesn't matter what it was that you were, that's not who you are. And you get to walk in relationship with him. He says, we get to come boldly before him in the righteousness of Christ Jesus because of what he did. And it's a powerful thing where we can walk in freedom. Yeah, so good. Jesus' blood is more powerful than any sin that we could ever commit. And I love that. Well, let's do our confessions out loud, okay? I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I am loved by God. I am loved by God. The same power. The same power. That raised Christ from the dead. That raised Christ from the dead. Lives in me. Lives in me. I'm the righteousness of God. I'm the righteousness of God. In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. I resist the devil. I resist the devil. And he flees from me. And he flees from me. My prayers are powerful. My prayers are powerful. And effective. And effective. I live generously. I live generously. Overflowing. Overflowing. With God's love. With God's love. In all I do. In all I do. Greater is he who is in me. Greater is he who is in me. Than he who is in the world. Than he who is in the world. God shall give his angels charge over me. God shall give his angels charge over me. To keep me in all my ways. To keep me in all my ways. I am filled with the grace and power of God. I am filled with the grace and power of God. God, I thank you that we can be filled with your grace and power, freed from our past, made new in you, equipped and empowered to walk with you and for you. I thank you and I speak a blessing over everyone who's joining us. I hope this has been a blessing to you. If so, like, share, subscribe, and help us get the word out. Yeah, and remember that our challenge to you is to spend time in the word every day so that you can discover all that God has for you. Be blessed. I hope to see you again soon.